Welcome on in everyone. I hope that you're all having a lovely day. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on how to find your art style and your art journey as a whole. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link somewhere for you guys. But I thought today I would go through my own art as kind of a sketchbook tour, although I'm a watercolor artist, so I don't usually keep a sketchbook. I just do them on like pieces of paper but specifically the Pokemon edition. So Pokemon has been a huge part of my art journey and if you didn't know I stream Pokemon Mondays every single Monday over on Twitch and have been doing that for the past three and a half years. So I have accumulated quite the collection of Pokemon artwork that I'm going to go through with you and have a chat with you about my own personal art journey. Make sure that you count how many there are because I'm terrible with numbers. I don't actually know how many there are. And this isn't even including the ones that people have as gifts or commissions. So this is from my own personal collection that I've dug out and taken out of the folders and it's going to be really fun putting them back in, but maybe I can organize them after I you know, do the video or something like that. But anyway, make sure you have your tea make sure you have your math skills with you and let's get into it now obviously I haven't painted every Pokemon there is there's over a thousand but if I have painted your favorite then make sure to put it in the comment section below starting off strong with these sketches that I used to do and I saved from an old notebook uh, that was my first kind of introduction to drawing Pokemon I used to google it and copy what I saw moving on to these coloring pages that I did for my brother's birthday I can't remember how old he was seven or something but I did these for his friends that came around I know that Chimchar doesn't have a tail I still do coloring pages you can find over on my Kofi. if you sign up for my memberships you can download them as PNGs and use them in your digital drawings Moving on to my Twitch era, this was the first Pokemon that I painted on my live stream, the little Squirtle on the rock. It is an acrylic and then I moved on to doing watercolors after that. It was the first Monday that I had streamed and I wanted to do a Pokemon Monday and it just never stopped from there. I've honestly done Pokemon Monday for as many Mondays as I can remember, maybe with the exception of a couple. I started off with these evolutions and then created my own evolution that you saw there at the end. And I redid them several years later, so that's what you're seeing on the screen now. And you will see in a little second that I didn't actually stray that far from the original style that I created Pokemon in. This one was an exception because I wanted to redo the evolutions in a cute little card style. Now these are in no particular order at the moment, I'm just going through all of the ones that I have done. I did start off with a bit of a thicker outline and then I evolved, <laughs> evolved into doing a thinner outline around the outside of my Pokemon. And in my early days of Twitch I was doing these kind of mashups, so I was doing a lot of Disney mashups. You can see this one is Monferno as a Boo and I did Dealing as uh, Bambi and that kind of thing. There are a few that were given away as gifts that I don't have anymore. but. I I liked doing these little mashups in the early days. So let's get on to why Pokemon was so important to me and why it has become such a fundamental part of my art journey that I just honestly haven't given up yet. Ultimately, the simplest answer I can give you right now is because it is comfortable. And I know that every Monday I'm going to have that regular thing that I know I can come back to. There's so many Pokemon, there's over a thousand. I know that I don't really have to do too much thinking about it. Something that I did evolve through doing Pokemon was learning how to use the subject matter and then changing it into my own thing. So using multiple reference photos rather than just one reference photo. And that evolution came from Pokemon from painting Pokemon because they do have such a similar art style to each other so you do get used to the way that Pokemon can move regardless of which Pokemon it is so they do often have like the same limbs and the same you know there's a lot of things that have similarities between their art styles so it is comfortable to come back to and be able to learn from that already having that subject chosen for you in a way. I do have a segment in my video about how to find your art style about this specific thing so if you were interested in learning more then go ahead to that video. But doing fan art of something that you are, well, a fan of is a really great way to learn how to how to do that really and to take away that that stress of picking something, of picking a subject, of picking something to draw, you know. So that was why I went towards Pokemon and I think why I've stuck with it as well because sometimes it can be a little bit, I'm going to say stressful to think of something to do on my stream and whilst I do have a lot of options that I can choose from, it's nice to not have to think and I know that Pokemon's always going to be there and it's, it's easy, you know. 
In terms of picking a Pokemon, I have used a lot of different options, including asking my chat in polls, uh, asking my Instagram stories, and at the moment I'm going through and doing all of the starter Pokemon because I haven't actually painted most of the starters when I, when I first started doing this a couple of weeks ago. I'd painted, I don't know, maybe about six in the entire three and a half years that I've been doing Twitch, so I'm going through and doing all the starters right now on my Twitch channel. The other thing is that it's really familiar for other people, not just me. So they know that I'm going to be there on every Monday doing Poker Monday. So they're going to be able to tune in. They're going to know what I'm doing and, you know, it's easy for them too. It is a little bit of a double-edged sword though because I am a full-time artist but I cannot sell Pokemon as it is the intellectual property of Nintendo. But what I have done is I've created these cute little Galactamon cards as I like to call them and we use them for giveaways. So every time I reach a certain goal over on my Kofi during my stream, the entire chat gets to enter the giveaway and I send sets of them out to people who support me by just simply by watching me. So I like to use it in that way because I can't use it in any other way. Also, did you count? Did you count how many Pokemon paintings I did? There are two different answers. There's one for the paintings themselves and there's one for the Pokemon themselves. So let me know in the comments how many you counted. I hope you enjoyed my little art tour and seeing all of the Pokemon that I've done throughout my life. It's interesting how something like that can influence me in such a big way that it's become a huge part of my art journey, so it definitely deserved a video on its own. But if you are interested in seeing the other artwork that I do and having a bit of an art tour of that, then please let me know in the comment section below and I'll be happy to make another video for you. I hope that you all have a fantastic rest of your day and until the next video, fare thee well everyone. Bye.